Hi everyone, today I'm going to try to show you how to sew a simple single pocket butt bag. Um, before I start, I have a few disclaimers. One, this will not be for a watertight wet bag. Um, a couple of reasons for that. One, I don't really have the means to show you how to sew a watertight wet bag. Um, and two, I think generally for cloth pads, you don't need a watertight wet bag. Um, you know, a saturated cloth pad really will never be dripping wet. So what you really need in a wet bag for cloth pads is something with a wipeable surface. So in the event that some blood transfers from the pad to the bag itself, it's not going to further transfer to anything outside the bag. Um, so really you just want to have a, a wipe, easily wipeable surface that can be washed um, in the event that some blood transfers. Um, that said though, if you would prefer to have a watertight wet bag, I will include a link um, below to something called seam, seal, and tape. I haven't tried it myself, but it's basically, from what I can tell, um, it's made of a material I presume similar to the laminate on, on PUL um, and it melts at a lower temperature than PUL so what you're able to do is place that over the seams and use your home iron to melt that tape into the seams and then that will close the seams up. Again I haven't tried it myself but it seems to work so I'll include a link to that below. Um, a couple of things with PUL usually best practice is that you use a knit needle and why that is is if you've never sewn PUL before this is what it looks like, um, at least the one that I'm going to use today, which is there's a laminate on one side, this is a shiny side, and the other side is um, a polyester knit. So the idea is that if you use a knit needle, um, what a knit needle will do versus like a regular sharp needle, is instead of cutting the fabric when it pierces it, it will, um, I think my understanding is that it will kind of push the fibers aside instead of splitting them, and that, that should allow you to then take the wet bag and put it in your dryer and this the seam holes, I'm sorry, not the seam, the needle holes will seal back up. Um, I have tried to do that, sew in with a knit needle and then put in the bag in the dryer. It didn't work for me, um, but that's technically best practice. So if you want prefer to try that, you know, use a knit needle. Um, it didn't work for me, so I just use regular needles when I sew with PUL now. Um, I think the needle I have right now is a Microtech Sharp needle. If you have tried um, and successfully heat sealed a PUL bag in your dryer, please describe how you did it in the comments below. Um, the other thing I think with sewing PUL is that you should use polyester thread. I only use polyester thread in my machine um, and that's important because you don't want, in the event that you do have something that is fairly wet, you don't want to have um, absorbent material in your seam and then that will like cotton thread because then that will pull the moisture out of the bag you know into the bigger purse or whatever you're carrying your wet bag in. Okay. So again, I'm, somebody I had asked me in the comments a few, couple of weeks ago if I could try to do a tutorial, so that's why I'm doing it. So I'm going to approach this with the assumption that you probably haven't sewn a PUL or you haven't sewn a zipper yet. Um, so you know, if you if there's any part of this that you already know, obviously you can skip over it. I apologize in advance for any technical difficulties. My phone tends to get a little bit wonky when I film longer videos. And I really only have, um, I only, this is my last zipper I think that I have right now, so I only have one shot to get this right, so it might be a little bit rough. Um, anyway, go, going forward, um, because I'm not going to be able to refill any of it. Okay, so a couple first things first. If you need a zip, I'm going to use the main closure of the bag. Um, the main closure of the bag is going to be a zipper. Um, and if you've never sewn with a zipper before, there's a couple things you need to know. One, the length of a zipper is measured, not the whole length of the zipper tape. So this fabric here is called the zipper tape. Um, the length of a zipper is not measured from end to end. It's measured from the metal stopper here to this metal stopper here. So this one that I have is a seven inch zipper. So what I do, um, I'm pretty comfortable with zippers now. I can manipulate them a little more. But when I just started sewing with these, what I would do is basically decide what size bag I wanted based on the zipper. If I wanted an eight inch bag, I would find you know an eight inch zipper stopper to stopper. And then I would cut my fabric to match the zipper tape. So then, because that will give basically give you enough seam allowance to sew without accidentally hitting these, this with your needle. You don't want to sew over this. It will break your needle. I have done that many times. You definitely want to make sure you will clear the metals um, stoppers when you sew. So I have a seven inch, um, seven inch zipper here, stopper to stopper. So I measured the whole tape and the whole tape is about eight inches. So I cut all my fabric pieces at eight inches. So the next thing is cutting your fabric. So once you decide on the size, so I figured I would want like a seven by five bag when it's done. Um, 
So I'm cutting the fabric eight inches wide based on the zipper tape. And I figured six inches down would be enough to give me seam allowance to sew the zipper and then seam allowance to sew the bottom of the bag. So the next thing you need is two pieces of your outer fabric and then your PUL. So I already cut this. Again, they cut eight by six and they've cut to the same size. So you have four pieces total, two cotton pieces, and then two PUL pieces. Um, of course, the cotton is easy to tell what is the right side, it's the side with the print. If you have a directional fabric, um, you know, you want to make sure that you orient it the correct way. So in my case, I want semicircles facing up. Um, for PUL, I'm going to treat, and I think the right way to do anyways, the laminate side is going to be considered the right side, and that's going to be important for when you install the zipper and whatnot. So the laminate side is the right side, and the knit side is the wrong side. It might be easier if you are new to PUL, if you use a piece of um, solid color PUL that's not white, so like blue, yellow, whatever, it might be easier to figure out right from the wrong side. Okay, um, so the hardest part of this really is installing the zipper if you've never done that before. Um, I'm not going to use my zipper foot for this because when I learned to sew zippers, I didn't use a zipper foot, and I think that was probably helpful. The zipper foot, zipper feet, sorry, could be a little bit intimidating if you're not familiar with them. Okay, so when you install a zipper, um, well, first thing, other thing I forgot to mention, I have a piece of twill tape here, um, just to add a loop, that's optional, but I'm going to show you how to add it if I don't forget. Um, but you don't need this if you don't want to have a loop. Okay. So pick, you know, an either piece of your um, outer fabric. I actually recommend if you um, are sewing a zipper bag for the first time, honestly things can shift a lot, especially depending on what your machine can handle. So I would actually pick a scatter print where you're not going to really, really be able to tell if it um, moves a lot. Okay, so um, with a zipper, the right side is the side that the zipper pull is on. So these are the zipper teeth. Usually it was um, the teeth are uh, nylon and you can sew over the teeth, but we shouldn't have to uh, We will sew over the teeth down here maybe. It doesn't matter. But anyway, so this is right side, right? So the way you install a zipper is you take the fabric um, So the fabric is right side up And this is the outer, outer fabric I should say is right side up. The zipper then is going to be right side down So I'm going to turn it over like this And I'm going to place it and line up the top edge of the zipper tape with the top edge of the fabric. I'm going to use um, my um, oops, I have binding clips. You can use pins. The one thing with pins, though, is that when you're working with PUL, you don't want to pierce the PUL unnecessarily because those holes will remain unless you're able to seal them back up, which again, I haven't been able to do. So if you have to pin the PUL, you want to make sure that you only pin in the seam allowance. Uh, I'm going to use quarter in seam allowance for most of this. Okay, so I'm going to just clip again along the edge. You want the zipper tape to line up the edge of the fabric. So I'm going to push this up, lines up there. I'm going to put clips to hold it in place. You can move the zipper pull around as you, as you need to to get it out of your way. Now, if you've just sewn a zipper pouch, we would stop here and, and sew the zipper to the bag, to the fabric. But now we want to put in the PUL, right? This is where it gets a little bit tricky, and I'm hoping I can show you this well, even though I'm just I'm filming with my phone, so I can't do much in terms of camera angles. But anyway, anyway we're going to take one piece of PUL. Okay, again, this is the right side. So the way you're going to do this is right sides together. So we need to put the right side of the PUL on top of the right side of the outer fabric. So you're going to put the PUL shiny side down. And you want to line up the edge of the PUL. This edge of the PUL. My, my cut was a little rough down here, so I'm using the flat edge. Um, the edge of the PUL with the edge of the zipper tape and the edge of the outer fabric. So I'm going to, just, I'm going to move the clips that I just put in um, and reclip it over the PUL. So now the zipper is going to be sandwiched between the PUL and the outer fabric.
Well, these are, I should say, these are Wonder Clips. I, I bought off-brand ones, but the most popular brand is Clover. Um, I'll, if I can find the link for the one I bought, I will include it in the description box. So, I mean, the clips are good because they avoid punching holes in the PL, but you can just use um, some narrow pins if you have them. Okay, so now the PL and the Ultra Fabric are clipped together with the zipper tape. So I'm going to show you what it looks like. So again, the PL here is right side to right side. This is the right side of the fabric, this is the right side of the PL, and they facing each other. And the zipper is sandwiched between them. And just a reminder that the zipper is teeth side down in this orientation, right? So I'm, I'm going to move over to the machine and show you how to stitch um, along this edge here. Okay, so I'm going to try to show you how to install the zipper. So this is simultaneously, I think, the most important part and also the hardest part for me to film, so please bear with me. Um, so ideally you would use a zipper foot, but if you, you know, you don't want to try with a zipper foot, don't worry about that, we don't necessarily need it. Um, you're just going to have to try to use your regular foot um, to kind of help you keep the keep a straight line while you're sewing. Okay, so what you need to do, hope I can show this well. Um, is the, the main thing is that you don't want to sew, you want to sew close to the teeth, which you can, should be able to feel through the fabric, but you don't want to sew over the teeth, right? So I'm, I have my quarter inch foot on right now because it's the narrowest foot I could use that's not a zipper foot. And I'm basically going to try to line up the edge of the foot on the left here with the edge of the zipper teeth. So that's going to help me guide the fabric through the machine. And it's going to keep you from shifting and it's going to get me as close to the teeth as possible. So that's what a zipper foot basically does that. It helps you get close to the teeth without going over the teeth. So, but you know, you basically just have a little bit more of your zipper exposed if you do it this way and that's fine. Um, I don't have much seam allowance to play with on the right side here, but that should be okay. So again, whatever foot you use, you want to try to get a narrow foot um, and get as close to the edge of the teeth as possible. So normal rules apply, you need to backstitch to secure everything in place, so I'm going to do that. I'm using just the default stitch length on my machine because this is going to be a hidden seam anyway. So I'm going to backstitch a few stitches. Okay. Then it's just a straight line stitch from there. Now this is where I guess can get a little interesting. So I'm coming up on my zipper pull here. That's quite bulky and it's a little bit wider. Um, so it's going to get in the way of the foot. So what you need to do is lift your presser foot up. And then go between the layers of the fabric. And move the zipper foot, zipper pull, I'm sorry, out of the way. So I'm just going to, here I'm going to pull mine towards the back of the machine. Because that, you know, that, seam, that area has already been sewn. So it's not going to get back. It's not going to be in the way again. Bring the presser foot back down and keep sewing. Again, again, you want to make sure that you're keeping the teeth close to the edge of the foot. Okay. Once you get to the end of the tape, I'm going to backstitch again. Okay. So there it is. Again, this is very close because um, my you know quarter inch foot is not actually that narrow, so I couldn't get. I'm pre so I'm pretty far away from these upper teeth, but you know that's okay. It's great. It'll hold. We'll secure it um, at the later step, and I'll show you how we do that. So I'm going to go back to the machine, to the, my cotton table and show you how to um, install these up to the other half of the bag because we just did one half here. Okay, so I'm going to show you just a closer look of what we just did. So again, we can see the seam at the top here. When you open it, 
you'll you'll sort of see like you know you'll see how Santa makes sense. So this is what this it will look like on the finished bag with the outside fabric, the zipper with the teeth on the outside, and the pull on the outside, and then the PUL with the shiny side facing in, which is what's gonna you know protect you protect your bag from the pads. Okay, so now we have to install um, the zipper to the other half of the bag, right? So it's basically the same thing. So what you're kind of doing is basically treating the zipper as if nothing is attached to it and doing more or less the same thing. So you're gonna take your outer fabric right side up again. Um, and then again, we're gonna pretend there's no fabric here and the zipper, this is the right side of the zipper, we're gonna put it right sides down onto the outer fabric. So we take the zipper and put it right sides down. Now the one thing we do have to do, and we do need to consider the other fabric because we want to make sure that the edges line up. So when you start lining up the top edge of the zipper tape to the outer fabric, you also want to make sure that the sides, the sides of the fabric line up. But I'm going to do the, I like to do the tape first and then I can move things if I need to. So then I'm going to use my clips. Let me secure that. You can just kind of smooth this fabric out and see if it lines up. It doesn't have to line up perfectly. We know we have enough room in the seam allowance to accommodate that. But you know, if you want it to be perfect, you can do that. So I'm just gonna clip this here. Actually, I think let me put the turn the clip over. So again, more or less the same thing, right? So zipper tape right side down onto the outer fabric. Line the edge here. I'm hoping you can see what I'm doing. My, sorry, I apologize for the shadow. I don't have great light in here. Um, okay, so then we're gonna take the PUL and the second piece of PUL and put it shiny side down, so that's the right side. And then you'll see it'll start to make sense that you know the bag is also coming. <coughs> sorry, the lining of the bag is basically coming right sides together, right? So here's the right side we already sewed onto the New right side of the um, bag. So, PUL shiny side down, clip it, and then we're going to move the clip so we can reclip everything all together. Okay, so that's what it looks like. And just so you can kind of see on this side, hopefully, that. So we have you know the pieces we haven't sewn yet, and then this is the piece we already sewed here. So we from the other side, this is the zipper pull over here. Okay, so you're going to take it to the machine. Um, I think just now I I didn't specifically say which way you should do it, but I when I sewed it just now I did it with the PUL facing up. I don't know how much that really matters, but probably gives you a little bit more control because you don't have to worry about um, any slippery fabric. Being on the on the free dolls. I'm not sure, but I think you you kind of can play around and see what feels more comfortable for you. Um, so I mean it's pretty much the same thing to attach the zipper the second time. You just sew along the edge as close to the teeth as your foot will allow. Um, and move the zipper pull as necessary. So I'm not going to film the second one. Um, so I'll be right back to show you what the next step is after we attach the zipper all the way. Okay, so I just sewed the second zipper seam to attach the zipper to the bag, and this is what it looks like. So I'm going to show you it looks like open all the way up. Okay, so it's time to make a little bit more sense now, <laughs> almost. So this is what it looks like, there you go. So there is a zipper tape installed between um, the two pieces of the outer fabric and then the lining, the PUL is on the back side. So this is what it looks like on the back side. You can see we have PUL shiny side up and then the zipper tape here. So if you can imagine like this is what the finished bag will look like. You zip it open, zip PUL. So the next thing we have to do though is still zipper related. We have to top stitch along the edge 
both edges here in order to keep the fabric back and away from the zipper so that it doesn't get caught up in the um, zipper, zipper pull whenever we open the zipper. So ideally you would um, press this open a bit. You want to use, I think, I forget exactly what the heat is for payroll, not, um, you don't want to use like a cotton temperature, you want to use something much lower. So I, would, I think it's like wool or synthetic, maybe whatever you use for nylon. Please don't quote me on that. Um, but basically you just want to like press it to help the fabric stay away. What I usually do to avoid iron and PRL is just kind of pull it back as far as it will go. And then again use my clips to keep the fabric away from the zipper tape. So that's my preferred method. So you basically would press the cotton before you get this far when it's you know, still on its own. And then you use some clips to keep the fabric away from the tape. Again, you can use, um, if you have binding clips, you don't need to have these special clips. Binding clips would be fine. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. So. And you want to also make sure that when you're doing that, that the raw edges of the, these edges are also raw, really. The edges of the um, cotton and PUL are lining up. Because you don't want it to have um, like puckering on the back side of it. So kind of just do that. Okay, so you want, and I would turn it over and make sure the PUL is also smooth. Adjust the clips if we need to. PUL has a bit of stretch in it again because it is um, is a knit on the opposite side in this case, so. Let's have a bit of stretch in them. Um, so keep that in mind. You're working with the fabric. Um, okay, so I'm going to go back to the machine and show you how to top stitch. Now, in an ideal world, um, if you use a zipper, zipper foot and sew in this fabric closer to the zipper teeth, when you top stitch, you'd be catching a lot of zipper tape in that top stitch seam. Because we, because I mean, the way we, I did just now, like, I use a wider foot, so there isn't actually much zipper tape in this seam. Really, I'm just going to end up sewing these two pieces of fabric together, but that will still, the same objective will be achieved, right? Which is to keep the fabric away from the zipper, zipper tape, um, so that it doesn't get caught in the pull. And because the zipper tape is sandwiched in it, you know, it will keep everything in place and keep it from shifting. I apologize for the noise outside, I have my windows open. Um, okay, so I'm going to go back to the machine and show you how to top stitch this seam. These two seams, actually. Okay, so I increased my stitch length a little bit um, from 2.5 to 3.5. Um, you can use whatever length you're comfortable with. If your machine doesn't really have, it's not computerized, then I think I would say pick maybe your longest, a second longest stitch length. Um, okay, so there's a couple ways to do this. Um, what I want to do... I'm actually going to turn it, there. this is going to look a little funny, but I'm going to turn it this, I don't know what I, that didn't make no difference. Okay, um, I'm trying to pick, um, I'm trying to find a guide to use so I don't top stitch too far. And so what I'm going to do, which one, what I did when we did the zipper, when we installed the zipper, is just line up the edge of the fabric here with the edge of my foot, and that will give me a guide. You can kind of pick whatever reference point you want to use, but that's going to keep it, straight and help me, you know, just keep it looking nice and neat. So I'm going to go back to the beginning of the fabric here, line up the edge of the foot, normal rules apply again, back stitch before you get too far in, so I'm going to back stitch, and then straight stitch down. Again, while I'm doing that, while I'm sewing the seam, I'm going to kind of, you can't see my hand here, but I'm going to basically use my hand to keep the fabric pulled away from the zipper tape to make sure that it's not bunching up on the back side. Especially because we're sewing now with the PUL, with the shiny side, sorry, facing out and touching the machine, you know, it can get a little slippery. So something to keep in mind, just so keep, um, keep your hand on the fabric to make sure that it's actually not um, moving around too much. I'm 
We're gonna add the end of the line, we're gonna backstitch. Okay. And then we're gonna turn the bag around. So you can see this new I just did there. Not very good light. Um but it was more or less is a straight line. <laughs> I mean I mostly sew for myself so I don't get too worried about little aesthetic issues like that. Okay, so same thing on the opposite side. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to actually um, layer the fabrics to construct the bag, the bag shape. 